hi everyone i hope you're well and welcome back to my channel today's video shall be the making of this beautiful overlapped short polar jacket and at first we're going to be drafting out the pattern after that we're going to be cutting and sewing on the fabric if you're new to this channel you're welcome this is don larry and on this channel i upload sewing tutorials and pattern drafting kindly subscribe and put on your notification bell so you get notified anytime i put on a new video so to get started we're going to be modifying our basic bodice pattern to create our chocolate jacket pattern so if you're here to watch my tutorial on how to draft a basic bodice pattern i'll put the link down in the description box so that you can do that so this is the front and the back basic bodice pattern so we're going to be starting with the back basic bodice and as you can see this is exactly our back basic bodice this is the neckline the shoulder slope this is the armhole ignore this one i wanted to use this for the front but i realized that i need more space here so i've also placed the waist that so as you can see it so this is what we have on our basic bodice pattern so to create our jacket pattern we need to enlarge this pattern a little bit so and the reason for enlarging our basic bodice pattern to create our jacket pattern is to create more room for the interfacing for the lining for the shoulder pad if you are adding one so that is the reason why we are enlarging the pattern so we're going to be enlarging this pattern for the neck depth i use one inch here and i use three and a half inch for the neck width so for the shoulder if you are adding a shoulder pad you will need to enlarge this pattern a little bit up to 0.5 inch that is 0.5 inch but if you are not adding um, a shoulder pad you had 0.25 inch to your shoulder slope so i'm going to do that now so we had 0.25 to my shoulder slope and then once you've done that then you adjust the arm hole so also at the under the arm you need to enlarge this a little bit so i will enlarge this by 0.25 so you can do that between 0.25 to 0.5 inch so i'm just enlarging this by 0.25 so i'll just use my hand to to connect that so can you see that once you've enlarged the shoulder slope and the under the arm then you are good to go so all you need to do is to add your seam allowance around your pattern so for the center back we're going to be cutting this on fold so you cut the center back on fold so you're not going to add any seam allowance or seam allowance to the center back then to the waistline because we are adding a peplum to this pattern so i will be adding one inch joining allowance so this is the side seam allowance of 1.5 inch so you can add less than that and you can add up to two inches depending on the allowance you want so then you will add your half an inch seam allowance to the armhole to the shoulder slope to the neckline so i'll go ahead and do that now so i've added the seam allowance to the back pattern and i've cut it out so we we'll move on to modifying the front pattern so for the front pattern i use 3.5 inch for the width and that is the same thing that we use for the back then for the neck depth we use four inches so we're going to be extending the the front uh, shoulder slope just like we did for the back so we're going to be adding 0.25 inch to the shoulder slope and to the under the arm we also had 0.25 inch and then we create a new arm hole curve so i will go ahead now and add 0.25 here then i will also mark 0.25 here then we extend this line and then we create a new arm hole curve so now that we've created a new armhole curve, the next thing we want to do now is to extend our center front line because the front of the jacket overlap each other. So we're going to be extending the, the waist line. So we first of all draw, extend this line. And once you've draw out an horizontal line, then the next thing is to whatever you have from this mark to this center front, this is our center front. So whatever you measure from here to here so in my own case which is 3.5 then i'm going to measure 3.5 from here to here also so whatever you measure from this dart leg to your center front that is what you will 
enter here so the next thing is to connect this point to this point so i will use this ruler to do that so once you've done this so we've created the overlapping for our jacket so the next thing we want to do is to create our collar the short collar so to create the short collar you're going to be needing your back pattern and on the back pattern you will measure your back neckline so you measure from your center back to to this point without the seam allowance so and you you make sure you measure it the way the neckline is so in my own case you can see the way i place my ruler so in my own case i have four inches so we're going to be marking four inches from this point upward and then we're going to be extending this line to this point so once you've done this then you will find the middle point of this line so you find the middle point and once you find the middle point you will also come to this point and mark 0.5 inch that is half an inch so these are the standard measurements and the reason why we are marking this is to create a collar that will relax well on the neckline so that is why you need to mark this middle point and then you mark 0.5 inch so you extend this line and then you connect this line to this line so by doing it this way it will make the collar to relax well at the neckline area so now that we have done this the next thing is to determine the width that we want for our collar so the standard is 2.75 and that is the minimum that you can use so i will just mark but for this tutorial i will be using 3.5 inch so from this mark now you will mark 3.5 inch and then you will also come to the down part of this and mark 3.5 inch so on your waistline you will also mark whatever you use for the neck width you will also mark it here so i will extend this line and then we're going to be connecting this line to this line so once you've done this the next thing we want to do is to extend this line a little bit and that will make the collar to fold very well and to relax around the neck area so we're going to be extending the line by 1.5 inch so i will mark 1.5 inch now from here to this point so just like this and then we're going to be connecting this point to this point So when fixing the collar, this part to this part will fall to the neckline area and then this part will be the folded part. So if you don't extend this part, it won't, fold, it won't relax at all at the back. So you need to do that. So here we have 1.5 inch. And this is how our short collar pattern will look like. So the next thing we want to do now is to add our seam allowance of half an inch to the armhole half an inch to the shoulder slope then we had half an inch to our collar like this down to the m line and at the m line which is the waistline because we're going to be adding a circular pattern to this so we're going to be adding one inch joining allowance here so i hope you understand this so i'll go ahead and do that and then i will cut it out so i've cut it out as you can see it so we're going to be needing a facing for the front and for the front we're going to be cutting out two pieces while we're going to be cutting the back on fold so the easiest way to cut out your facing without struggling is to find the middle point of your shoulder slope which is here and once you find that middle point place your ruler from that middle point straight to the to the bust point so can you see the bust point so you place it like this and then you fold so you fold your pattern paper or your fabric so can you see the crease line so that will be the guide for you so for the facing we're going to be cutting out exactly what we have from this line towards this side for our facing and that will be the fabric or if you are using another fabric but that is not going to be the lining so this part will be the lining part of our of the jacket 
So this part from here to this part will be the lining, while from here to here will be the facing, and which will be the same thing as the main fabric. So I hope you understand. So if you want to cut on the, if you want to cut your facing now, all you will need to do is just to fold it like this, place this on your fabric, and then you cut out exactly what you have from here. And at this end, you will add your seam allowance to it. And if you are cutting your lining also, you will cut out this part and you will add seam allowance to the lining. So I hope you understand this. To make the sleeve for our jacket, you're going to be needing your basic sleeve pattern. And I have a tutorial on how to draft this pattern on the channel. I'll put the link down in the description box so that you can watch that. So we are going to be making a little adjustment to our basic sleeve block. So at the sleeve head curve, which is here, you will come down by 0.25 inch. And also at the bicep line, you will need to add 0.25 inch to it. So just like this. So you add it to it at both sides. And then we're going to be connecting this to this point. So I will just use my free hand to do that. So just watch closely the way I'm doing it. So... We are eliminating this ease around the sleeve because we don't need any ease or pleat around our sleeve. So we just come that way like this and then down to this 0.25. Then I will do the same thing to the other side like this. down to this part then i will connect this part down to the wrist line here down to the wrist line so once you've done this then you can go ahead and add your seam allowance to your sleeve so i will go ahead now and add half an inch seam allowance round this pattern and i will cut it out so now that we have the pattern that we need for our jacket so we move on to cutting on the fabric and on the fabric for the sleeve you will need two sleeve one back and then two pieces for the front so i will also cut out the facing for the front the lining and then i will cut out an interfacing for the front so let's cut on the fabric so now we want to cut out the circular pattern and we're going to be using the 360 degree circular pattern so to determine the length of the circle you want to cut out or the peplum you want to cut out you will need to take away your waist length from your total blouse length so the total blouse length of the measurement i'm working with is 25 inches and the waist length is 16 inches so taking away 16 inches as you can see it from the total blouse length i will be left with nine inches so that means the length of the circle i want to cut out will be nine inches but remember that i will need to add seam allowance to the m line which is the outer part of the circle and then i will need to add half an inch to the inner part of the circle so for the length we're going to be cutting out 10 inches so the, to determine the radius of the circle we want to cut out you're going to be dividing your waist measurement by 6.284 which is the standard measurement that 6.284 is the standard measurement for circular pattern so and the measurement i'm working with is 35.5 inches i want to have a little bit of pleat so i will make the total waist circumference 40 inches so dividing 40 inches by 6.284 i have 6.4 inches so the radius will be 6.4 inches and the length will be 10 inches so to determine how to fold your fabric now you will now add these two together the length of 10 inches plus the radius of 6.4 we have 16.4 inches so once you've added these two together, and in my own case, I have 16.4, you will just fold your fabric. So can you see the edge of the fabric? So you will just measure. So from the edge of the fabric, you measure whatever you get. So in my own case, 16.4. So I'm just going to make it 17 inches. So that's 17 inches. Fold your fabric into two. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So you fold your fabric into two. like this so i will just cross check again so here i have 17 inches and also here you will also mark 17 inches so that you don't waste too much fabric 
So once you've marked that 17 inches, then you fold your fabric again. So because we are folding into four. So can you see that? So this is the 17 inches I marked from here down to here. So you will just fold from there to here. So now we have four folds. So now that you have four folds, so we can now measure our radius and the length. So the radius is 6.4. So I'll mark 6.4 here. And then the length is 10 inches. So can you see that? So this is the length. So I will first of all mark around the radius, which will be the inner part of our circle. Mark 10 inches, which is the length of the peplum. So once you have this, so we are going to cut this out now. So this is what we have. So can you see that? We're just going to cut one of these and that will fall to the center front. So as you can see, I've cut out everything on the fabric. So I'll just go over this quickly. So this is the back and we are cutting the back on fold. Remember, you will cut just one piece for the back. And you cut the lining the same way so this is the front and we cut out two pieces for the front as you can see it and for the front facing so we have the facing and I cut out the interfacing the same way I cut out the facing so you can see it and I've ironed it on so this is the facing so can you see the crease line so I just I had it half an inch seam allowance to this uh, fabric and then this is the the lining part of it so can you see how easy it is so i'll just go ahead and join these two together the lining to the facing and then i will also sew the dart for the front and the back so the lining separately you sew the dart separately on the lining the dart separately on the fabric so this is the sleeve so you will need two sleeve for your jacket and then two lining so this is the peplum so I also cut out a lining for the peplum. This is optional. So if you don't want the lining, just cut out your fabric and you are good to go. And also for the belt, I cut out times two of the waist measurement and some inches. So just make sure that whatever you cut out is times two of your waist measurement. And then that is what I have. So I will just join this together to make it one long belt. So let's assemble our fabric. So to start sewing now, let's start with the peplum. So for the peplum, if you are not using a lining, just go ahead and sew the M line. And then if you are using a lining, just place the lining to the right side of the fabric. And then you sew the edge round to the other head. So that is for that. So for the belt, I will join the two together like this. Then I will fold the two. Once I've joined it, I will fold it like this. And then I will sew from one end to the other. So I will just leave a little opening in between. So you will use that opening to turn everything out. So for the sleeve, I'm going to turn the sleeve with the lining. So I will place the lining on the right side. And I will join it at the M line. For the back pattern, I will go ahead and sew and transfer the dart to the main fabric and the lining. So I will sew the lining, the dart separately on the fabric and I will sew the dart separately on the lining. So I will go ahead and do this and I will show you what next. So I've sewn the dart both on the front and the back and on the lining. So we're going to be starting with the front. And the first thing we're going to do is to place the, the facing on it. So you place it on it like this. And then we're going to sew it from this top down to this waistline. So we're going to do the same to the other side. So, so I've joined the two together as you can see it and I've ironed it. So this is what we have. So once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to join these two together at the neckline. So all you will need to do is just to, you open it up like this. So you open it up like this, place the two together. And then you make sure this the stitch line aligned together and then you will use your half an inch seam allowance 
to sew it from here to this end so i've joined it together just like i explained earlier and this is what we have so now that we have this so we're going to be joining the back to the front so you will you will fold your back into two and then you notch and on the neckline you will notch the center back which i've done here so the center back now we now fall into this crease line can you see this stitch line so that is where your center back will be so let's pin this together first and then we are going to stitch from here so this is where the shoulder of the front start from so you will fix the neckline through to this part and then you will also pick the the shoulder and then you will fix the shoulder to the front so just like that. just take your time you will get it once you you are at this stage so you fix the neckline and then you sew the you sew the shoulder line then you do the same to the other side so once you have done this then we're going to be closing this up with the lining so the same way we sew the the main fabric for the back that is what you're going to be doing for the lining so you will place the right side of the lining on the facing like this so you can see the right side of the facing so the right side of the back lining will be together with the facing and then you notch the center back you pin it down like this and then you will also sew it the same way we sew the the main fabric so it will go through the neckline and through the shoulder so i will go ahead and do that then i will show you how it looks like so this is what we have so can you see the right side so can you see that through to this side and this is what you will have at the wrong side so can you see how neat it is so this is what we have now this is the front and that is the wrong side of the front this is the wrong side of the back so next we're going to be joining it at the side so you go ahead now and use your measurement to create the side seam so i will go ahead and do that so now that we've joined it together at the side this is what the right side looks like and this is the back so this is our collar at the back so can you see that so now we're going to be joining the peplum to it so the peplum i've torn it with the lining and i've ironed it already so i will just sew it round the bodies and then this is the belt so i've torn the belt also and i've ironed it then the sleeve so you use your sleeve measurement to join the to create the seam line for the sleeve and this is what we have so i will go ahead now and join the peplum once i'm done with the peplum i will attach the sleeve i will attach the sleeve and then i will show you the final look so i've joined the peplum to the bodies and i've also attached the sleeve so before you join the peplum you make sure that the collar you can see the collar the, from the mid uh, center back neckline so you make sure that the collar remain folded like this through to this part so you can see this part so make sure you fold the collar before you attach your peplum to it so this is what we have so you can now go ahead and attach your press button just to hold the two in place and also you attach your press button to this part and to this part just to hold it in place so guys this is what we came up with it really came out so so nice Thank you for watching this video if you find it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you are yet to subscribe to my channel kindly do so and don't forget to put on your notification bell so you get notified anytime i put on a new video till i see you guys in my next tutorial have a wonderful day bye